Man, you already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life. And we're back. I didn't do the opening like I usually do because I didn't want to give too much away on today's video. Today's video being some of the craziest things I've seen guys get caught with while locked up. Now, a couple different things happened to make me you know, actually think about doing this again. Well, we got these ring doorbell cameras, right? And ring cameras all around my house. And there's like a community feed on Ring where you can see videos other people have posted. And in doing that, I've seen guys stealing packages off people's porches, breaking into people's garages, their cars, their houses. Made me angry to see it happening. But then once I realized that I once was one of those people, so much just shame and guilt engulfed me that it was it was a really weird feeling, man. I truly am ashamed of a lot of the stuff that I did. I don't look forward to having to explain to my son one day that, you know, his dad was in prison and that I wasn't always the man he now knows. So that got me thinking about it because these guys are caught red-handed committing these crimes. Seen right? a UPS man. Take a big box, put it on somebody's porch, and you know how they take a picture of it to prove it was put there. Took a picture of the package, and then when nobody was looking, reached down, picked the package up, and took it back to his truck. Crazy. People are grimy. But then the second thing, which I'm going to show y'all a clip on, was these drones. And the amounts of drones they're catching, bringing things into prison. And not just the drones themselves, but what they're bringing and how much of this stuff has been caught. Some of the items that they catch these drones with or inmates trying to receive doesn't surprise me. And then some of it's like, wow, what was he going to do with that? But I have seen guys get caught with things you would never think somebody in prison would have access to. Things you would think that somebody in prison wouldn't really even know about. But indeed, we do. So that's that. Without further ado, you know how to see it. You know how to live it. So, let's relive. 20 people have been arrested now after investigators with the State Corrections Department said they were caught flying drones over the Lee Correctional Facility to deliver more than 100 pounds of contraband. Five people were arrested during two separate unrelated incidents of people trying to fly drones carrying that contraband. The 20 total arrests came after an eight-month-long investigation. Now, investigators say they confiscated about 100 pounds of tobacco, 13 pounds of marijuana, numerous cell phones, knives, guns, drones, charging cords, candy, and over $6,400. Okay, so to me, that's just mind-blowing. Mind you now, I came home 2014. Drones were not a big thing. When I heard of drones, it was like, all right, the military used the drone to drop a bomb on somebody things of that nature drones were real new at when the period you know came that i got out and just watching that listening to that three guns dudes attempted to have three different pistols dropped off into the prison candy really candy you know it's probably edibles would be my guess but candy nonetheless talking to one of my guys this morning he said why, why would you need a gun in prison why wouldn't you need a gun in prison what are you talking about guys need guns out here in the streets where they're not surrounded by criminals and killers prison would definitely be a great place to have a gun but it also is going to end really really bad because you're going to kill somebody you could also use that gun to try to escape that would be my best thought for the for the use of the firearm but once they catch you with that gun in prison, oh, no. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. You might as well go up there to the phone, don't even call nobody, and just delete every single number you got on there and stop wasting everybody in the world's time because you ain't never coming home again. There are literally hundreds of videos and news articles on this whole drone ordeal. A lot of it taking place in the U.K., People are going to jail. I had somebody I knew not long ago run that off for by me. My words were, are you stupid or something? 
Well, I'm not about to get no drone and send you nothing. Like, man, you got me messed up, huh? And then it made me question. This dude's not really my friend. He knows I'm out here doing good. He knows I live a normal life, a good life. I'm not with all that craziness. Man, I can help you make some extra money. I don't need no extra money. You can make more money than what you're making now. I'm not making it legitly. I don't want it. But just hear me out. Dudes is getting these drones. They ain't but a couple hundred dollars. And you can make big, big money with this thing. Nah, man. Jay, you ain't. You could be a couple miles away in a gas station somewhere, a hotel, and fly right in and I'll pick the pack up. And, well, how you get blessed? Nah, man. You are not my friend. You want to take me away from my family and my children and have me sitting in there with your dumb ass. Not happening. But with the drone ordeals, it got me thinking. Nah, no drones. Dudes were taking t shirt cannons, and shooting stuff over the fence. Running up, throwing stuff over the fence. I remember the old city jail watching people walk right down the hill and toss stuff over the fence. Hey, daddy. Yeah, mama said call in the 96. And the little kids run back off. True story indeed. The only thing I did see that came close to a drone, and actually, yeah, I'd say that's the closest thing I've seen come to a drone, was one of those airplanes. You know, like the remote control airplanes. Middle of summer, maybe 2011, I want to say. Yeah, 2011, we were on the yard just walking. Middle of summer, ordinary day, prison life, bored, sweating, dusty, dirty, locked up. As I walk, I keep hearing this bing, like humming noise. What the hell is that humming noise? And I look out through the three fences, through the three different sections of clusters of razor wire, past the tower, and I see this remote controlled airplane just flying back and forth across the field. And way off in the woods, you can make out that there's somebody standing there. You can't tell it's a man or woman. You can just tell the person over there standing maybe half a mile, quarter mile away in the wood lines is operating that plane. They come running out of the yard. I guess the, the guard in the tower must have seen it. But the guards come running out of the yard. Lock down. Get in the building now. Screaming at all of us to get in the building. We take our time. Now you're going to the hole. Going to the hole. Lock down now. We got, you ain't in this building in 30 seconds. Man, we're two minutes across the yard. So we put some pep in our step, right? Like cattle, herding in through the gate. We'll go ahead and get in the building. I'm looking out the window. I can't see this little plane no more, but I can see all these perimeter vehicles and state police and guards outside the fence. And maybe, I don't know, a minute, minute and a half after we get in the building, I hear a couple shots. Boom, 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 boom. The hell is going on? We would find out later that evening that the guards out there shot it down. That's why all the state police and them were all out there, but the actual guards working at the prison went out there with the shotgun and shot the little plane down. State police located the man in the woods. The airplane thing didn't have anything on it. But what we thought, what we figured he was doing was it was a test run to see how the guards were going to react and how close he could get to the fence without them messing with him. Would they come mess with him? Yeah, you're in the woods standing outside of a prison. They're coming to mess with your dumb ass. You're going to jail today. You don't just go stand in the woods next to prisons and fly little airplanes around like everything's okay. That was the closest thing I've seen to a drone. It's a known fact. Ain't no snitching in this. Everything we had in there that was on a large scale at that time was making its way through the visiting room. But you can only bring so much to a visitation room. There's a lot of things you can't bring to a visitation room, like some of the things we're talk about today. Most of that stuff was making its way into them guards. We're going locked, and they do major shakedowns every year. At this point in time, we were doing two major shakedowns, institutional lockdowns, where they lock down compounds all across the state. They come in, and they the whole prison is locked down. There's no movements, no inmates coming out their cells. The guards are feeding, the guards are cleaning up the trash, the guard, you know, the nurses are coming around going cell to cell, passing out pills. You are not coming out of that, that cell until that prison has been shaken down. I cannot explain or get it clear enough to you how stressful those shakedowns are. 
they get less stressful over time as you get more weathered and seasoned and you've been through them hundreds of times, they get less stressful. But a prison shakedown is the equivalent of you being pulled over by the police, having a whole bunch of stuff in your car you know you shouldn't have, knowing you're getting ready to get caught with it, or praying that they don't find it. That's the best way to describe a shakedown. You are in this cell. You've got stuff you shouldn't have. You're going to the hole. If you've got illegal things you shouldn't have, you're going back to court and you're going to get more time added. They're coming. You can't get it out the cell. It's in there. You better hope that you got it hidden good. When they do these shakedowns, they'll be on the yard with metal detectors out there walking around. Like you see the people on the beach looking for change, looking for jewelry that's been dropped. They're doing that on the yard, looking for weapons, anything metal in the ground. The ground should not beep. They do the same thing in the prison. They come in with the magnifying glasses, the little uh, what are you, the little mirrors, looking above the pipes, looking above this, looking under this, under the tables, checking the microwave, trash cans. Every nook and cranny of the prison gets searched. That's when you're most likely to get caught with something. The only good thing about the annual shakedowns is we would know they were coming before it happened. We would hear about it. Somebody in the chow hall, hey man, they brought all those styrofoam trays into the loading dock that would make its way back to us. When large amounts of, when a tractor trailer full of styrofoam trays shows up, that means we're not going to the chow hall. That means they're starting to feed us out of styrofoam trays. And the only reason we would be eating out of styrofoam trays is if we're locked in the cell. My beginning, it was it was shortly after my the beginning of my bid, so maybe 2007, somewhere around there, we go on this major shakedown. At the time, pretty much my whole bid, I'm not even going to say at the time, pretty much my whole bid, alcohol was a big thing. Alcohol is a big money maker. It's really easy to make. It's cheap to make, and you can turn a good profit off of it and get your drink on. So everybody, for the most part, drink. A lot of the older guys would leave it alone and let the young dudes do it because they know it led to problems. But a lot of us were making. Every time they would do these big shakedowns, guys, for the most part, would get everything cleaned out of their cell. Man, I ain't get caught with no wine. Like, sell it off, let somebody else finish cooking it, or dump it, drink it before it's ready, try to rush it and heat it up to get it ready, whatever they got to do to get it out the cell. This time in particular, we hear the trays are here, man. They're coming in for shakedown. Two weeks goes by. We didn't got rid of all our wine, got rid of this. All the things we're not supposed to have, we got put up. Two weeks have passed when they hit us with the okie doke. Ain't no shakedown coming. We go back to regular convict inmate conduct. Everybody gets all their stuff out to hiding spots. Guys go back to making wine. Wake up bright and early one morning. I got a job, so I got to get up every morning, get dressed, go to child, come back and leave out with first movement and go work maintenance. I get up, same routine every morning. I throw my hair, my earbuds in, plug them into the CD player, throw whatever I'm listening to on at the time, and I go to the sink, stand there, wash my face, brush my teeth, get dressed, and I wait for them right after count clear to say stand by for child. Count is now clear, such and such, 100 hours. Now I'm waiting for them to say stand by for child, and they usually pop the door, and you come out and sit there until they say, you know, 7 bill, 100 pot, exit for child. They don't call child. The day room lights are on. The lights go back off. I wake my celly up. Hey, you know what time it is, man. We on lock. Get up. We got to hide everything. We had the most amazing hiding spot you could ever, ever, ever have. And I'm not going to tell on it because well, I'm not going to. I'm sure guys still use it to this day. But our hiding spot had never, ever been torn off. Years and years and years, my whole 10 years, I used the same hiding spot. I didn't never got tore off. So we get all our stuff put up. Put in, I call it the Bama. Out here in Virginia, we call it the Bama. The Bama's the hiding spot. We get everything put in the Bama, right? We're prepared now. We done shook ourselves down, make sure we ain't got nothing. Now, I'm going to make sure I give them something so they'll leave me alone. So I'm going to drop some extra sheets outside my door. I'm going to drop a couple extra roll of toilet paper because when they come in shaking down, they're looking for overflow of things, abundance. Oh, he's got too many shirts, too many socks. They don't want you. People become hoarders in prison as well. So you got to watch dudes. You got to you gotta limit it. If not, some of these dudes are just have a whole cell stack to the ceiling with stuff, right? So me and my cellmate, we can sit back and, and breathe easy now, right? We done got everything hidden. 
They don't come in that day. Throughout that day, they shake down other buildings, other pods, and we can hear them. I see them out on the wreck yard with the metal detectors, and they got the drug dogs out there running around, and they're shaking down other buildings. Slowly, they're making their way to us. Next morning, bright and early, as soon as count clears, I look out. It comes in all the guards. Got a bunch of rookies. You got vets. You got sergeants, lieutenants. You got investigators. You got everybody you could think of standing in there. Some of these guards, it's their first few shakedowns. They've never really done this before. So they're anxious to go tear somebody's shit up. They start off at cell one. I'm in cell 20. So got a good little ways before they get to us. But way before they get to my cell, there used to be a dude in my pod named T-Pain. And next to him was this old guy. They get to the old guy's cell. And they're shaking down, and this will be the first time that I'd ever seen what I'm about to tell you, which I went on to do myself. They start bringing out jugs, big, clear plastic jugs. And I'm looking at these jugs, and I can tell that that's wine. It's pinkish, red color. Damn, that man got a lot of wine. They bring out at least five-gallon jugs. That's five different gallons they brought out. And then they start bringing out these big jugs of looks like water then they start bringing out electrical cords they start bringing out copper tube and pipes i'm looking like the hell this man's stealing copper in the prison where the hell did he get those copper pipes from what is he doing with the copper pipes i didn't know anything about what i was seeing i'm just seeing it investigator goes over there they lock the old man and his cellmate up take him up out of there we get through the shakedown okay I go over, talk to T-Pain, talk to some other people. Hey, what the hell did your neighbor have? Man had a still in his cell. What? All those clear jugs were liquor. The process of turning wine or alcohol in itself into liquor isn't hard. All you have to have is a sealed container, a form of heat, and some type of tubing so that as it boils and heats up, alcohol evaporates off goes through that copper tube and drips out into the other jug. You've got to boil a whole lot of wine to fill up a whole entire gallon jug. It takes a lot of wine. I'm talking off of five gallons of wine, I used to only get maybe a peanut butter jar full. That's it. This man had jugs. He had been doing this for a while. The man got caught with a still in his cell underneath his bed. At the time, we got this, the VCE building across from our buildings where they do school it's where they have their trades. It's where the visiting room is, the gym is. All these different, you know, sections of the building are across from us. Well, they're redoing the HVAC. We don't have heat and air conditioning in our cells. A lot of guys would sign up for school and trades, A, because sometimes there'd be females that run the class, so they get to go over there and see a female and be all creepy and shit and stare and stalk and go back to what they're used to doing. And E, they had air conditioning. You're in this hot ass pot all day. You go outside in the summertime, there's it's brutal. It's hot. It's dusty. So you go to school, you get to sit in the classroom all day, stare at a female, and sit in the AC. They upgrade the units on the building. And when they do, they tear these units down. They tear all the copper coils off of them. And they got a big scrap pile that they're throwing this stuff in. And they're throwing it on the outside of the fence off the roof. But every now and then some of that pipe would fall. Boom and hit the yard right there beside where you go in the chow hall. Old Pops had been coming out chow hall when nobody's looking, reached down, grabbed him a bunch of, you know, this copper coils and rolled it up, put it inside his jacket and made his way back to the building. And the man set up a whole entire still in his cell. I'm super curious. I would actually go on later on down the line. I met a dude named Lightning Jack that ultimately got shipped off to a higher level. But I learned from Lightning Jack how to make moonshine, how to make liquor while in prison. Very, very lucrative trade. But if you get caught, you might as well do what we say. Lay it down. Because you're going to be in the hole for a very, very long time. They're going to hold your ass back there so long you're going to forget how to make liquor. <laughs> Let's get into the next story, man. Yeah, it's way too bright for all that. So, there are a lot of different things... Okay, I won't say a lot. There are select things in prison that can kind of transport you from where you're at in that moment mentally to another time or another place. Uh, the phone. You can get on there and start talking about the good old days or reminiscing or talking about this and that. And that can momentarily 
distract you and take you away from your environment. A letter, a card, a scent. But one of the biggest things for me that I felt could remove me from prison, just mentally, was the music. I think we all can agree that certain songs remind us of certain points in our life, certain stages, where we were at, who we were with, what was going on. You know, we've all got that one song, like, damn, that was me and old girl song, or when I remember when this came out, I was living at such and such, and I was doing this, or music can transport you. It's, it's, it's a blessing to have it while locked up. From the time I got to prison until the time I got out, only music we could get was clean. You couldn't get the explicit stuff. And all our music came through a company called Music by Mail. We'd have to fill out a slip, pay all this crazy money for the CD, then it would show up and it would be clean. I actually got locked up. They still had tapes. And then dudes would come in after me, come to my cell, go to borrow a CD, and I'm like, I got it on tape. They'd be like, damn, how long have you been locked up? You got a tape player? Yeah, and I got a whole bunch of oatmeal boxes full of tapes. Where did you get that? Got it off commissary. How long have you been in prison? True story, right? But we could only order the edited music. With the teachers, they have what's called a teacher's aid. It's like the teacher's pet. And this is the, the best of the best when it comes to inmates. To have this job, you have got to pretty much, I mean, just... Be like the biggest brown noser. You've got to be smart. You've got to be trusted by the guards. You're trusted by the staff, the teachers. Everybody looks at you like you are the poster boy for model inmate of the month. You should get a plaque on the wall. But these guys are still inmates. Everywhere I've ever been, one thing in common. Those teachers' aides get to sit behind a computer. Now, there's not many of these dudes, and there's not a whole lot of classrooms, so you're talking out of thousands of inmates, maybe five inmates that have access to an actual computer. With helping the teacher and doing the courses and you know helping her schedule everything, get everything ready for the inmates each day to come into class, he can get online. Sometimes she'll say, hey, I want you to download this video and burn it onto a disc that way we can show it in class tomorrow. This guy is great to have. You go to him, hey, you can get music, right? Nine times out of ten, somebody else will just tell you, hey, I know somebody can get it. But if you know him, you cut the middleman out because he's going to try to make some money off of it. Go straight to the dude, hey, I know you can download music, right? Yup. Can you get your hands on blank disc? Yup. Hey, this new CD came out, man. How much you want for it? $25. It's going to be dirty? Yup. Burn it for me, I got you. That guy made a killing. Anybody that had that job made a killing. And we're willing to pay for it because we ain't never heard the song before. We ain't never heard the album before. Then you get to a section where it's just bleeped out and it's just bass and music and there's no words. You know there's supposed to be words. So you want the explicit version. They catch you with it on shakedown. They take it from you. So what we would do is we would wax the top of the CD, put floor wax on it, and then stick it to the page of a magazine that had like a picture on it and then cut around that CD perfectly and then wax the top of that, and it would make it look like an actual CD, and it would cover up, you know, the print part on, on top of the CD was an image. It always ends bad. I've told y'all this. It all, somebody always messes it up. This CD thing has been going on for years without a hitch. No problems, right? Except for them taking it, questioning the guys, and that's about as far as it goes. They come in one time. Later in the evening, after chow, we're getting ready to lock down. So it's upwards of around 5 o'clock. We had a warden at the time called Warden Hinkle. He comes in. Got a couple other people with him. Investigator. Investigator says, hey, everybody listen up. That's going to stop everything that's going on inside that pod, that tier, that dorm. And everybody's going to get them. Why the hell is the warden here? They're going to get everybody's attention. I go to my dorm. I'm standing there looking. I'm like, what is this man in here for? Man, what are these dudes done dead? What is going on? Whoever's got it, return it. We won't make no big stink about it. You know what I'm talking about. Wait till ain't nobody looking. Bring it out, put it on the table, or sit it beside the microwave, or beside the control booth. I don't care if you put it in the pillowcase, how you do it, but you need to give it back. How they talking about? Give what back? Looking at my cell, he's like, I don't know, man. 
talk to my neighbor Will and them. I don't know, man. Nobody knows what they're talking about. Next day rolls around. They come in again. Hey, we're going pod to pod. We ain't saying nobody has got it. But somebody's got what we're looking for. And we're going to get what we're looking for. You need to give it back before we come in here and tear this bitch up. Y'all don't want us in y'all's house destroying everything, taking out all the little stuff y'all got, y'all ain't supposed to have. It needs to be returned ASAP. So by now, all the rumors have started. I hate gossiping. Anybody that knows me on a personal level will tell you I hate drama. I hate when, you know, people talk behind each other's backs. But all the rumors have started. First thing I remember hearing was, Somebody has stole a walkie-talkie. Everybody panics. If they've got a walkie-talkie, that's a means to escape. They are going to flip this bitch upside down looking for that walkie-talkie. Then the next rumor is somebody stole the guard's keys. Yeah, man, the guard laid the keys down in the chow hall. One of the workers back there must have snatched the keys up. They're going to tear this bitch and flip it upside down looking for these keys. Those keys unlock doors. You can walk out the prison if you got the keys, right? Seven Build 100 pod at that time was a worker pod. Not everybody in there was a worker, but most of us in there had jobs. So we knew we were going to get hit the hardest. Everything we were hearing, I even remember hearing a rumor that it was a gold pen somebody had stole off the warden's desk and that it was like engraved to him and that somebody had stole this pen. So we know with us being the workers pod that Majority of the workers on this side of the prison are in this pod. We're going to get hit hard. The inmates do what they always start doing. Start threatening. Doing the guards' jobs for them. The guards come in there and threaten us. And then the in, you know, inmates don't know how to do their time. They can't take the pressure of a shakedown. Don't know how to hide their stuff right. They start panicking. Hey, man, whoever took them people's shit, y'all need to give it back. We find out y'all stole it and y'all get our stuff tore off, we're gonna have problems. <laughs> yeah, okay. Dudes are making announcements. We're gonna start going cell to cell until we find whatever they're looking for. We don't want them in here. So now we've got chaos amongst us. Certain dudes, you gonna do what? You come in my cell and take what? Guys are fighting behind this. They continue to come in day after day, a couple days in a row now. They done came in and they done made this announcement. They told us. Y'all got to the end of the week. If we don't get it back by the end of the week, we're coming in here. We're going to tell y'all's happy little home. All this shit. We're going to make y'all's life a living hell. Whoever's got it, give it back. Friday rolls around, all hell breaks loose. We come out, stand by for child, waiting to go to breakfast. One of the dudes comes out of the cell and says, man, they locked my celly up last night. What? We came in, your celly don't bother nobody. They came in and locked him up. The cellmate works in a library. Why are they locking the librarian dude up? I've dealt with this dude a million times. He don't bother nobody. Quiet ass dude. He don't really do nothing wrong. I ain't never seen him partake in nothing that a lot of the dudes take. Like, why'd they lock him up? Man, they ain't say. They come in, told him he was underneath investigation. Going to the hole. Here we go. We go on the child. We come back. There's a brief period we lock down and then we go to work. Sitting there waiting to go to work. Ain't nothing happening. Then I open the doors back up. And they come. They start with our pod. Start to sell one like they always do. They flip the whole pod. They tear this bitch up. They dump the trash cans out. They are searching everywhere for whatever it is they're looking for. They've already locked one guy up in here. We don't know if they've locked anybody else up in any other pods, but we really don't know what's going on. Is it a walkie-talkie? Is it keys? Is it a pen? They finish searching our pod. Several people get caught with stuff and get taken out of there in handcuffs and taken off to the hole. And they roll on to the next pod. Then they go upstairs. Then they go to the other pod. And then they go to the other building. For the next few days, we're completely locked down. We come off lock. And we all find out what really happened. What they were looking for wasn't in our pod. It was nowhere near us. It was in the building next door in a building. With the, with the library job, it's a good job. There's a lot to do in the library. I used to love to go to the library. I could read the local paper. I could check out books. Um, if you liked PG-13 movies and there weren't many people in there, the librarian lady would let you there, the old school bubble TV, and this little Apex DVD player. This thing was small, tiny, like maybe 9, 10 inches. 
And you could, you know, check out a movie and sit there with the headphones on and watch the movie during your library period. It might be Flubber, Big Daddy, Nutty Professor, things, movies like that, right? Tell me why somebody stole the damn DVD player. Stole the cord that goes to the back of it, shoved the DVD player down their pants. It was a small period, but we didn't have a metal detector in the hallway. It was messed up. The cord was unplugged, so I guess dude took the opportunity being the crackhead he is I guess he's used to stealing DVD players that's his thing shoves his DVD player down the front of his pants so nobody's looking and like I said the thing is all it gets an apex it's nothing and makes his way up out of there gets in touch with the dude that makes the CDs for everybody ask him can he make porn can record CDs can you record videos yeah could you make it like a porn disc yeah makes him a disc pays him Dude's got a stolen DVD player with a burnt porn disc and is in his cell doing what he's doing. Entire side of the yard just completely locked down, shut down, all over a DVD player. Never in my life could I imagine that people could be so stupid. You know, you can't fix stupid. You can fix somebody's behavior, somebody's way of thinking. Stupid is unfixable. Once you're dumb, you're just dumb. You can get smarter, but you can't get unstupid. Then they find the disc that's got the porn on it when they get the DVD player back. And the teachers bring these discs in themselves. So they one might shop at Costco. One might have got their disc from Best Buy. Or one might have got their disc from Walmart. So most of the teachers, they had different style discs. They take one look at the disc. Go to the classrooms. Figure out which teachers got these type of discs. You know, the ones that can have videos burnt onto them. Find out who the teacher's aide is. Lock dude up. There's the end of the music. I told y'all it always is bad. I actually enjoyed this video. I got to do a couple more of these. Shakedowns are stressful, strenuous, and entertaining, to say the least. You stand at that door waiting on them to come in your cell and search through your stuff, and you know they ain't going to find nothing if you're on top of your game. You know everything's put up. So it becomes entertaining. You just kind of stand there like looking around at the other cells like, I wonder what they're going to find. What is that? Damn, that's a big ass knife. Man, they just caught a dude with a phone. I remember they caught a dude with a PSP. That was brought in by an officer. We'll tell that story one day. But you just stand there. You never know. It's like a box of Cracker Jacks. You never know what's going to come out of the bottom of it. That's what a shakedown is. You're looking around at these cells and you're like, they're going to bring you out of there. That dude got a pet praying mantis. Can't make this stuff up, man. All facts. I'm glad those times are over. I'm glad that now if I get pulled over by the police, I can hand them my driver's license, registration. Um, I'm not going to search my vehicle, but if you wanted to and or you had reason to, there's nothing in here. I don't do anything wrong. And I hope that all of you out there live in the same way. These stories are entertaining. But it's not what you want your life to be. I'd much rather have stories related to raising my son. I'd much rather have stories of going to football games or school plays or things of that nature and not stories related to prison and having to relive missing 10 years of his life. I live my best life these days, bro. I live my life for my kids, for my family. Like I told you, I've fallen back from 99.9% .9 of Everybody I know because I got so stressed and overwhelmed that it was taking my focus off the joy of my kids, my family. Please live your best life. If you're caught up in this madness, the stuff going on in these streets, get up out of there, man. It's not too late. There is a way. If you find a way to, to do everything wrong, you know it's much harder to do things wrong than it is just to do it right. If you can get out here and make money illegally, then you'd probably be pretty good at working a job because it's harder to obtain money illegally than it is legally. But anyways, these jails, the tent centers, these prisons, they're all just crazy world inside of this already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. Just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life and to all my real ones. And there are some real ones watching. Cause y'all still watching me. Now y'all know how we do. Salute.
you know, still a DVD player. Yeah, we got TVs in ourselves if you can afford one, but did you really think they weren't going to miss the DVD player? Now, let me find out that was gay porn. Oh, there's so many questions I got, man. I mean, this dude, man.